how will nothing's first flagship, the Phone 3, stack up against some of the best Android flagships that 2025 has to offer in this extremely detailed 100-0% battery life drain test. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness level using a lux meter. They're all sitting on 100% battery health. They have all been updated to their latest available software updates. They're all SIM free and only connected via Wi-Fi. They're all using 120Hz LTPO displays, except for the Nothing Phone 3, which uses a 120Hz LTPS display. And they've all been set to their native screen resolutions. Will Nothing's so-called true flagship be able to keep up, how will the compact OnePlus 13S stack up against its bigger brother, and which ultra flagship will come out on top in terms of screen on time. This is Tech Nick, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, it's worth making sure that all phones are sitting at 100%, which they are. They've all been charging for about an hour now before starting the test. We'll be using an infrared heat gun with an emissivity level of 0.5, sitting at a room temperature of around 18.1 degrees Celsius with the AC set to 17 degrees throughout the test. And we'll be checking the temps at the start of the test while they're charging right now, as well as in between each interval. So it's not really relevant right now, but if you are into charging temps, at the start of this test, the Xiaomi is the hottest and the Samsung is the coolest. Now hitting start on that start timer phone on the right hand side, you'll notice a couple things on the screen here and it might be a little bit overwhelming. So for anyone new to the channel, at the top right we have the time interval and that is in direct relation to the battery percentage below the branding of each device above each actual device. So like now we're getting to the time interval of 30 minutes. As you can see the timer phone on the right hand side is sitting at 30 minutes and we have 97% on the nothing phone, 100% on both OnePluses, 100% on the Oppo and Vivo, 97 on the Xiaomi and 98 on the Samsung. Now underneath those battery percentages are the temperatures. One is the interval, also in relation to that time interval, and the other one is the peak, the hottest that that specific phone gets throughout this test, and that will change until it reaches its actual peak temperature. Now we're sitting on the one hour mark interval here, and we have the Nothing Phone 3 with 95%, 99 on the OnePlus 13, which is leading the pack here, alongside the Vivo. Then we have the 13S with 98%, 97 on the Oppo, 95 on the Xiaomi, and 1% ahead of the Xiaomi is the Samsung at 96%. Now, if you guys are a little bit rusty on specs, at the bottom of all the devices, I have thrown some of their specs there, including their battery milliamp hour capacities and a couple other specs, just to keep you in the loop with where these phones are all standing right now. And at the bottom right-hand corner, we have the current app that we're in and what we're doing within that app. So like right now, you can see that we're in Facebook in the bottom right-hand corner, and we're currently playing live TV within the app. Now, just a couple things to note here. All of these phones are global, running global ROMs, except the Oppo and Vivo, since these Ultra variants are exclusive to China. Only their Pro variants released in the global market for the Oppo and Vivo, and those were powered by the Dimensity 9400 chips, whereas these Ultras are using the Snapdragon 8 Elite chips. Actually, every single phone here is running the 3 nanometer 8 Elite, and the S25 Ultra is running an overclocked version of it. The Nothing Phone 3 is the only one here running on a 4 nanometer process node since it uses the Snapdragon 8S Gen 4 CPU. So it's kind of a flagship. The Oppo has the largest battery here and the Samsung has the smallest. Even though the OnePlus 13S is the smallest device here, its battery capacity is actually only a little less than its bigger brother, the OnePlus 13. It's actually crazy how they managed to fit such a huge battery in the 13S, especially since it's not even using silicon carbon material, which allows for smaller physical sized batteries within the same sized capacity. Oddly enough, the 13S in China actually has a larger 6,260 milliamp hour battery, and that is silicon carbon, but it's known as the 13T in China. Either way, I'm interested to see how long the 13S lasts, given that it has a large battery and small screen. It's just a pity that it's not easily available around the world. I mean, it's the cheapest phone here and it's running the fully fledged 8-core 8 8Elite 8 chipset. It is the only phone here without wireless charging though, so keep that in mind if you do decide to purchase one. Now we just reached that 3 hour 30 minute mark interval and we have the leader being the OnePlus 13S, the smallest phone here but still a massive battery, 86% and it's beating its bigger brother the OnePlus 13 by 3%, that's on 83%. 78% is the Nothing Phone 3 which is actually trailing the pack here, above it is the Xiaomi with 79% and 81% on the Samsung, we have the Oppo on 83% and the Vivo on 85% which is second here. We just hit that 4 hour mark interval and we now have the 
OnePlus 13 and Oppo Find X8 Ultra matching each other. The OnePlus 13S is still leading the pack here, but it's only 1% ahead of that of the Vivo. And a couple things just to note here, we're currently running selfie video recording at 1080p 30fps. Even though all these phones can do 4K selfie video now, all of them can also do 4K 60fps back video as well, but you'll see then we do 4K 30. So why is that? Well, I've been doing these battery drain tests for a long time, so I've kept things exactly the same when compared to my very first battery drain test. I think I've done more than 30 now. So if you want to want to compare to other phones screen on times within my channel, you can because I stick to the same formula, the same brightness, the same apps that I run, the same amount of time I run within those apps. So you can compare like for like any of these phones to any of the phones that I've tested on my channel before. Now you can't really compare them to other channels because they use different screen brightness levels as well as different apps. So kind of stick within my channel. And if you haven't yet, please do give me a sub. It would be much appreciated. Now, other things that I do, as you can see right now, is run benchmark tests. Now, I only run three benchmark tests and only for one hour. Now, it's not so that I can drain the phones quicker. Or it's, I know that you guys don't run benchmark tests on the daily, but this simulates high performance gaming and I can't play seven high performance games on seven different phones at the same time in this battery test. So I run just one hour of benchmarks to simulate that. Now, we will get to some casual games later, just some light games you'll see in a, after this interval. And those are what most people would do in their coffee break or whatever, but heavy games, I don't think people play heavy games too long on their phone. I mean, if you are one of those people, maybe you should think about that. Well, we're reaching that six hour mark interval now, and we still have the OnePlus 13 S leading the pack, and this time by quite a huge margin. 46% on the 13 S as opposed to the second runner up, that being the Vivo with 39%, 38 on the OnePlus 13, 37 on the Samsung, 32 on the Xiaomi, we have 33 on the Oppo, which is beating the Xiaomi, and 31 on the Nothing Phone, which is trailing the pack here. Now let's get back to speaking about these phones again. It's worth mentioning that the Nothing Phone 3 has a larger 5,500 milliamp hour battery in India, and the Xiaomi 15 Ultra has a larger 6,000 milliamp hour battery in China. Sometimes companies limit their battery capacities in the Western market to save on shipping costs. Only the 13S and S25 Ultra use standard batteries. The rest all benefit from silicon carbon tech, which replaces some of the graphite in the anode. This leads to higher energy density and faster charging. It's also worth mentioning that while the Vivo and Xiaomi also use silicon carbon, they run it alongside lithium polymer instead of lithium ion. Now we just reached that seven hour mark interval and we have the OnePlus 13S still leading the pack here with 40%. Next up is the Vivo with 31%. Then we have the Samsung with 28. And then we have the Xiaomi with 26. Below that is the Oppo with 25%. The OnePlus 13 is actually on 30 though, and 25% is the lowest, that being the Nothing Phone 3, and that has the second smallest battery here, only second to that of the Samsung, which weirdly enough actually has the smallest battery in this test. Now, two flagship things that are missing in the Nothing Phone 3 is a three nanometer chipset and an LTPO display, which are two features that definitely help when it comes to battery efficiency. Nothing phones are very well optimized though, so I'm interested to see how long it lasts for. The OnePlus 13S does have a three nanometer chip and an LTPO display, but it also has a much larger battery and a much smaller screen, which should help. It's worth pointing out that it has the same pixels per inch as the Nothing phone though. Now we just reached that eight hour mark interval and we have 31% on the 13S, the only phone above the 25% mark. I kind of color categorize the percentages at the top based on 25%, 50, 75, and you know, up to 100, of course. Now, second to that is the OnePlus 13. Well, second to that is actually the Vivo with 21%, then the OnePlus 13 with 20%, then the Samsung with 19, then we have the Oppo with 16, Xiaomi with 15, which is actually lower than that of the Nothing Phone 3. And right now the Nothing Phone 3 is still beating it after eight hours and 30 minutes, 12% as opposed to 10% on the Xiaomi. So the Xiaomi is actually trailing the pack here. Now I'm not sure if you guys noticed earlier, but in terms of temperatures after that one hour benchmark section that I did earlier, the OnePlus 13 S actually got the hottest. And I'm not really surprised since it's the most compact phone over here. So everything is quite tight together there. There's not really much space in terms of being able to push things around in the phone to dissipate heat. But in all honesty, I was actually pretty surprised that it didn't get that much hotter than the rest of the phones here. Though the Samsung was significantly cooler than all of them in terms of peak temperature, peak being the hottest that we actually saw throughout this test. 
only hitting 53 as opposed to the 68 degrees in Celsius that we see on the OnePlus 13s. And that's because Samsung are known to kind of hold back performance so that they don't overheat. And the Nothing Phone and the Xiaomi were actually the only two that overheated to the point where they actually killed their respective benchmark app. Now, obviously we've hit that nine hour, 30 minute mark and all of them are still going, which is just ridiculous. But after nine hours and 34 minutes, the Nothing Phone 3 calls it quits. It's the first to go. Nine hours and 34 minutes of screen on time. It was the first to die, but it almost hit 10 hours, which is crazy for it being the first phone to die. This is definitely flagship level battery life. And since the phone just launched, I'm expecting future software updates to improve battery life even more. Shortly after the Nothing Phone died, the Oppo called it quits, then the Xiaomi, and then not long after the Xiaomi, you'll see it in a sec, is gonna be the Samsung. I mean, you can see it by the battery percentage that and there it goes, nine hours, 47 minutes on the Samsung. So we have nine hours and 34 minutes on the Nothing, then nine hours, 41 on the Oppo, nine hours, 45 on the Xiaomi, and nine hours, 47 on the Samsung, which is pretty crazy. The Nothing might not have a three nanometer chip or LTPO display, but it's still kept up with all of these phones and they have larger batteries. The Samsung has a smaller battery though, so its milliamp hour per minute reading was better than the Nothing, but the Nothing got a much better milliamp hour per minute reading when compared to the Oppo and Xiaomi, which once again have larger batteries. The OnePlus 13 barely beat the ones before it, and somehow its smaller brother is still going with 17% left in the tank. And we are about to hit that 10 hour, 30 minute mark interval and the only two phones that are still going is the OnePlus 13S and the Vivo X200 Ultra. I'm surprised that the Vivo made it this far, but I was not expecting the OnePlus 13S to reach 10 hours and 30 minutes. The Vivo just went after 10 hours and 31 minutes. The Vivo X200 Ultra placed second here, which is very impressive. But the X200 Pro, which has the exact same size battery I tested out last time in my previous battery drain test, it reached 12 hours and 18 minutes. And that was very impressive. But you know, obviously that is a global model running a dimensity chip this is a China only model, so it's running different software. We just hit 11 hours on the OnePlus 13S, which is what the iPhone 16e in my last battery drain test reached. It died at 11 hours and this is still going with 12% left. Either way, this means that the OnePlus 13S has won this test, which I was not expecting. I'm interested to see how much longer it lasts. I mean, I'm not sure what OnePlus have done with the 13S here, but whatever they did, they need to do the same thing with their next proper flagship. It just reached 11 hours and 30 minutes and it still has 8% left. I'm really starting to wonder what magic they've put into this tiny little device, but it is working. It doesn't really have a much smaller battery than the OnePlus 13 beside it, but it does have a much smaller screen. So I take it that that helps and all the other flagship goodies that you see in the 13 are packed inside the compact body of the 13S. I thought that the Vivo X200 Pro did well last time out with 12 hours and 18 minutes. So let's see if this little guy can beat the X200 Pro, which actually costs quite a bit more. The OnePlus 13S is the cheapest device here. But you know, it's so limited, mainly in the Indian markets, you'll find it everywhere else. You won't really be able to get your hands on it, which is a pity because it's such a great phone. But let's see, oh, it's beat the Vivo now. 12 hours, 25 minutes over here is when it decides to call it quits. And this has seriously blown me away. It seems like the new winning formula for battery life these days is a large battery, a small screen, and an efficient flagship chipset. In seventh place, we have the Nothing Phone 3 with nine hours and 34 minutes of screen on time, which is actually very impressive for a battery size of 5,150 milliamp hours. Definitely flagship level battery life. Sixth place, we have the Oppo Find X8 Ultra, nine hours and 41 minutes of screen on time. Not that much more than the Nothing Phone, but it has a much larger 6,100 milliamp hour battery, actually the largest of this test. Then we have the Xiaomi 15 Ultra, nine hours and 45 minutes. Once again, these are just minutes between each other. 5,410 milliamp hour battery. Then in fourth, we have the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra. Again, not that much higher, not that much more screen on time when compared to the three phones before it. Then in third place, we have the OnePlus 13. It broke that 10 hour mark. 10 hours and two minutes of screen on time is fantastic. Massive 6,000 milliamp hour battery. Second, we have the Vivo X200 Ultra. 10 hours and 31 minutes. It didn't quite match up to the X200 Pro, but this is still very solid screen on time. And then in first place, 
we have the tiny OnePlus 13S, still with a massive battery, but a much smaller screen, 12 hours and 25 minutes of screen on time. It seems like we're going opposite these days. Small phones equals better battery life. But small phones don't exactly mean better temperature. We got a peak temperature of 68.6 degrees Celsius on the OnePlus 13S. But in all fairness, it's so much smaller than the rest and the rest didn't get that much cooler in terms of peak. I mean, the OnePlus 13, for example, hit 63.8 degrees in Celsius, though the Samsung was the coolest at 53.1 degrees in Celsius in terms of the highest temperature that it reached. Now, the first time I tested these phones, there's only two of them, by the way, the OnePlus 13 and the S25 Ultra. Last time out, the OnePlus 13 hit 10 hours and nine minutes. So it's pretty identical to that. And the first time I tested out the S25 Ultra, it got nine hours and 35 minutes. So it looks like incremental updates have improved battery life a little bit for it. And then if you take a look right at the bottom of the screen, you'll see their predecessors best times. So for the OnePlus 13, its predecessor is the OnePlus 12 with a smaller battery, but it hit nine hours and 46 minutes. Not so different when compared to this. Then when it comes to Oppo's predecessor, the X7 Ultra, it got eight hours and 27 minutes. The X100 Ultra of last year got eight hours and 46 minutes. So a huge improvement here. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra, 7 hours and 23 minutes. So this is more than a two hour screen on time upgrade with the 15 Ultra. And then the S24 Ultra got 9 hours and 46 minutes. So exactly the same as this. Now, if all of their battery capacities were exactly the same, we're going to take the largest battery cell here and pretend that it was in all of these phones, that being the Oppo Find X8 Ultra 6100 milliamp hour cell. Now, if they all had that exact same size, then first place would still be the OnePlus 13S, but then things get interesting. Second place would now be the S25 Ultra. It would jump up to a whopping 11 hours and 57 minutes. Now, this is based on their milliamp hour permanent readings, which you can see in the center of the phone here. The Samsung actually had the second best milliamp hour permanent reading, and the third best milliamp hour permanent reading was the Nothing Phone 3. So it would place third with the same size cell. Then fourth place, we'd see the Xiaomi bump up to 11 hours. Fifth, the Vivo would drop down. Then sixth would be the OnePlus 13 and the Oppo's time would stay the same and it would drop down to seventh. Now, overall, I'm impressed with the screen on time with all of these phones. Honestly, if you pick up any of them, you're gonna be very blown away by their battery life. But if you want the absolute best battery in the smallest phone you could possibly find with such good battery life, then I don't think you'll find a better compact phone than the OnePlus 13S. It just kind of sucks that it's not really available for the whole world to enjoy. This is Technic and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.